Hi, everyone. I'm Liz Bothwell from Waste 360 with Charlotte Dreisen. And thanks for joining this week's Waste 360's Unpacking Recycling with Charlotte. We have another great episode on tap. And today we're talking all things plastic. So Charlotte, plastic has gained a ton of attention lately. And it's definitely an area where we see a lot of confusion. So we're glad you're here to help. So can I'm you tell me so thrilled to be here. <laughs> so glad. Um, so please talk about uh, anything you can and, and tell people what they need to know about plastic recycling and how to do it well. Yeah, it's a great question and I'm so glad we're tackling it today. I think it's top of mind for everyone, whether they work in the industry or they buy products that are made of plastic or have plas uh, plastic packaging. Um, certainly it's become increasingly um, front of mind for folks. And I think one of the really interesting things to think about is its environmental impact and how we can best recycle it compared to its presence in the waste stream. So when folks are often really concerned about what do they do with it, can it be recycled or not, it's helpful to first kind of take a breath, I think, and, and just kind of reset and know that it's a very small chunk of our overall waste stream to start with. So while plastic items, we have a lot of them, it's a pretty small portion by weight of the, the waste stream. It makes up about 12% of everything we produce and only about 5% of containers and packaging in particular. But that being said, we definitely wanna make sure it's being managed responsibly all within the trash and recycling system, whatever is most appropriate for the given package and not escaping into the environment without a doubt. But it's, it's, it's good to know that in, in most communities, you can recycle many, if not most, of the plastic items that you might have on hand. And one of the exciting things to know is that markets for plastic is a commodity in the recycling market are really strong right now. They're just about as strong as they've ever been, certainly in, in recent history over the last many, many years. But um, it's, it's also helpful to kind of break it down and think about the specific kinds of plastic in particular. So, you know, we know that it's not all one, um, one kind of homogenous type of material. There are lots of different kinds of plastics. Some are more valuable and recyclable than others. And you can do a lot of things to them that take a good plastic and, and makes it bad and makes it unrecyclable. So I have a, a number of examples here that I'm excited to talk through and we'll cover, I think, um, you know, and by all means, if there's anything to Top of mind for you, I'm, I'd be thrilled to cover it, but talking about the most common plastic packaging that we might have in our homes and our kitchens and bathrooms and, and you name it. Um, so we'll start off with PET. PET is the kind of plastic that most soda bottles, water bottles are made of. Um, it's really highly valuable. It has a great end market in the recycling system and is something easy for folks to, to sort at recycling facilities. And the way they do that is that recycling facilities have what we call near infrared optical sorters, which is a little bit uh, technical and jargony, but NIR sorters for short, optical sorters for short, and they basically bounce a, a laser beam, a light beam down at the plastic. And based on what they, they find, they sort the plastic in one direction for another. So they'll sort all of these pieces ET bottles in one direction and they'll sort all of our HDPE milk jugs in another direction because they're made of two different kinds of plastic. Um, whenever we are recycling plastic bottles, we want to be sure that we're always reattaching the cap. So we talked a little bit about this during our last conversa conversation on paper uh, last week, but um, caps are really small and unfortunately we can't recycle anything that's under about two inches by two inches in the recycling system. So we wanna make sure to reattach it to the bottle so that the bottle can kind of ferry it through the recycling system uh, and it'll make it through. And some folks kind of point out, you know, like, hey, isn't the cap a different material than the bottle underneath it? And this goes whether it's a PET bottle or a different kind of bottle, the caps are often a, a different kind of material. And uh, rest assured that all the material is shredded and then they do something really cool called uh, a float sink tank. They put the shredded plastic in basically what's a big tank of water and different plastics have different kinds of densities. So some are more dense than water, some are less dense than water, which means that some some plastics float and some sink. So that's how they, they basically separate the different kinds of plastic that the main bottle and the cap are made of on, on the back end. So it's kind of cool. It's like a, a science project. I feel like I must have done something similar in middle school and I'm totally blanking, but uh, it's, it's really cool to kind of see that working in, in practice. But one of the tough things with plastic bottles is because the, the optical sorters have to, to see and read the kind of plastic the bottle is to make sure it gets sorted in the right direction, we need to be pretty cautious about bottles that have those full body shrink sleeves. So I think to me, like, 
the example I see most often is like chocolate milk or muscle milk. They often kind of have those um, those sleeves that are around the bottle. And if they're a different kind of material than the, the bottle itself, the optical sorter is only going to be able to see what's on the outside. So sometimes when a bottle has that, that plastic sleeve over it, we want to not put it into the recycling bin or we want to take off that sleeve so that the machines can all read the actual plastic that it's made of. Um, so that's something that, that I feel like I always have to catch myself on, uh, with, you know, uh, whenever bringing stuff out to, to the recycling bin. Uh, but of course we know that that plastic shrink sleeves and, and those, uh, those materials aren't the only things that we're putting on plastic bottles. So this is an example of a high value plastic bottle, um, with a plastic cap that has a paper label on it. So something like this would also be really challenging to make sure that the plastic bottle is being sorted effectively since the paper isn't going to do a good job of letting the machine figure out what kind of material the plastic bottle is. Um, and paper also, once we get to the plastics processing stage, gets really gummy and is a contaminant to the system. So it's always good to think about, you know, if there's something on a plastic container that's not plastic, chances are you want to be removing that. It's not super often that you see it, but you definitely, definitely do every once in a while. There's uh, a couple other, other items that we want to be on the lookout for to remove when we're recycling plastic. So this is a... Um, Soap container, the hand soap that I'm out of that I've yet to replace this week, uh, which has, it's a little bit tough to see, so I'm gonna raise it to the camera on the off chance you can see it. Um, it has a metal spring in there, and um, totally ignore my like dirty dish soap bottle there. Um, apologies for that, but I wanted to make sure to, to show you the metal, the metal component in there. It's the same kind of metal component that you'll find in a spray bottle. So if you have stain remover or uh, you know, whatever you might be spraying um, in the kitchen or in the bathroom, uh, cleaners, you name it. Um, all of those metal components are really harmful to recycling equipment. So, you know, it's a different material. It's not plastic that's in that plastic bottle. So because it has that different material made of metal, we want to remove it and, and take off that spray pump or the spray trigger uh, before recycling the main container, which is really high quality, very valuable plastic uh, in and of itself. Um, I'm going to move on now to HDPE, so high density polyethylene, which uh, is what we have. I feel like the, the iconic example is a milk jug. So most milk jugs are made of HDPE. I have no milk in my house, but I drink half and half with coffee um, exclusively. So, so this is what I had on hand. Um, but it's a really high value plastic. We call this natural HDPE. So if it's not colored or dyed. Um, and that has some of the highest value on the recycling market of any plastics today. So right now it's being sold for more than $2,000 a ton. It's even more valuable than aluminum, which is, is really kind of crazy to think about. And it's exciting to see that people um, have demand for that, that recycled plastic. Since, you know, we know that when we put things into blue bins, we have to count on it being bought and purchased and used as recycled content back into new products. So it's really exciting to see that there's that much demand and interest from companies in reusing that material more so than there were in, in years, years past. Um, but HDPE isn't something that we only find in milk jugs. It's in lots of products and packaging. Um, shampoo bottles are often made of HDPE. And this, of course, is colored HDPE. So also really valuable, but it's not quite as valuable as natural HDPE usually. And one of the things that, that's important to think about for plastics is, is how colored or opaque is it? So some kinds of plastics, there's more tolerance for opaqueness or, or colored, um, colored dyes than others. Um, for HDPE, there's really strong markets for, for opaque and colored products. So we're good to go with the shampoo bottle and the milk jug. For something like the, the plastic PET bottle, that really doesn't have as strong a market for opaque and colored products. So it gets complicated quickly, um, and it, it's hard to keep all of those straight, but it's good to know that it does make a difference depending on what kind of plastic it is, you know, how recyclable or how valuable it is based on those, those elements. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about a couple different plastic film items now. Um, so we know that it's not only rigid plastics that we have in our homes uh, that we want to recycle, but we have a lot of plastic film items as well. It always surprises me that here in DC, we have about one third of our plastic stream is plastic films and bags. So it's a really big portion of the stream by weight. And knowing that it's such a light material, we know that by item count, if you will, that uh, we have a ton of materials that are made of this. And, and some are recyclable, some are not. 
Um, what's important to know is that no plastic film or bag at all can be recycled in the curbside system. So we talked a little bit last week about um, you know plastic bags being a contaminant for, for the paper recycling stream and for the re recycling stream as a whole, and, and that it jams and wraps around what we call a star screen, which is the first big piece of equipment at recycling facilities. So plastic bags, if no matter what they're made of, no matter what kind of plastic it is, if you put it in a blue bin, it's going to, to jam that equipment and the entire facility will need to shut down for it to be cut out. And, and people literally go in with box cutters and, uh, and they have to climb into the machinery and, and cut it all out, which is one of the biggest way that recycling workers get injured. So we really wanna, wanna mitigate that as much as possible and make sure all of that plastic film is being recycled in a special drop-off program if it can be, or put in the trash if, it, if, it, if there's no way to do it. So a lot of the materials that we can recycle in those special plastic film drop-offs are polyethylene. Um, the stream only accepts polyethylene. It can be HDPE with a number two resin identification code, what, what folks refer to the recycling numbers as, or a number four low density polyethylene. So you wanna keep your eye out for a little number two or number four if you're unsure. And if you ever have a doubt, it's always best to put it in the trash rather than risk contaminating the system. But we have a lot of, of good high quality polyethylene items in our homes. I have a Ziploc bag here. This is pure polyethylene, perfect to recycle in the plastic film drop off that I have at a grocery store two blocks away. Most big grocery stores, many big grocery stores have plastic film drop offs for recycling. Um, not all do, and sometimes you do have to ask customer service, so you may not see the bin at the entryway, but that doesn't mean they necessarily don't have that drop off. Um, lots of other plastic film items that we can recycle include dry cleaning bags, cereal bags, bread bags, takeout bags, um, a lot of trash bags if you weren't gonna use them to put trash in. Um, Gosh, many things that e-commerce comes in. So you'll see those kind of white and blue Amazon shippers that are made of a basically bubble wrap, which have a how to recycle uh, label on it, which explains that it can be recycled in store drop off. Um, a lot of the, the in kind of the interior plastic bags that, you know, clothes might come in in your e-commerce shipment. Um, so it's exciting to see more and more options out there that are this high quality polyethylene that we can recycle through film drop offs. But some plastic film items certainly can't be put into that stream. So um, bags that grapes come in or these sweet little mini bell peppers that I had bought last week. These are in film uh, film bags. They're film plastic, but they're not polyethylene. They're made of polypropylene, a different high value plastic. But unfortunately, it just can't be accepted in this special drop off stream. And the giveaway, it's really hard. This is admittedly not easy. And this is why we need more on package labeling. But the Ziploc bag um, is kind of soft, you know, uh, flexible. The polypropylene bag, which can't be recycled in the film drop-off stream, is really crinkly. So that's, that's one good giveaway, but it's, it's kind of the best rule we have when we don't have a really great way of differentiating it. So the best way we can kind of recommend folks to, to keep in mind are just to, to kind of keep a mental list of the plastic film items that they might be able to set aside and bring to a, a store drop-off. Um, but there are certainly uh, some other examples of plastic packaging that we want to make sure we never put into a recycling bin, whether it's our curbside bin or a special drop off. And that's basically anything with, with mixed plastic or m plastic mixed with other materials. So if you think about coffee packaging, that's a really great example of uh, a plastic package that has aluminum layers and different kinds of plastic that all have different performance functions to keep your coffee fresh. Um, which is really important. We all want a great cup of coffee in the morning, but unfortunately it means that those mixed materials can't all be put into a recycling bin since the system has no way of separating those out. Um, plastic tubes are the other big one that I think are, are good to keep in mind. So plastic tubes, unfortunately, no matter what kind of plastic they are today, tubes are just not a format that our recycling system is set up right now to sort. So, you know, whether you have a really old school, uh, like metal tube of toothpaste or tomato paste or hair dye, um, you know, or a, a plastic toothpaste tube like I have, um, unfortunately, we want to keep all of that out of the recycling bin since unfortunately those materials can't be separated today and it can't be sorted in the system. But I'll stop there. I know we just went through a whole lot of packages. Oh, I think that's fantastic. You covered so much and you gave some pretty good rules of thumb because it is confusing the numbers and all different sorts of PET. So thank you for that, Charlotte. That was awesome.
Yeah, absolutely. No shortage of different facets to explore with plastic packages. <laughs> now, how are you feeling about recycled content in packaging and uh, consumer brands using it and consumers actually adopting the use of it? Yeah, such a great question. And I and this is something I may be most excited about of all the many things I'm excited about in recycling uh, and, and composting is that we're seeing recycled content for plastic packages more and more and more than we ever have. So not only are companies using it to a higher degree, but they're also telling you they're using it more and, and in better, bigger font on packages. So it's really hard to go to the grocery store and, and miss a, a package and not see a package in any given aisle that says 100% recycled content or you know 20% recycled content. Whatever that level is, we're definitely really excited to see increasing proportions of it being used. And different amounts of recycled content can be used for different items um, easily, I should say. So if you have a, a clear PET bottle, it's more challenging to put recycled content into this because you want it perfectly clear and transparent. And unfortunately, when plastic gets recycled more and more times, uh, it can typically be recycled five to seven times before it gets too tired and fatigued to, to be useful as recycled content. But it tends to get a little bit yellow and a little less strong. So, um, so you know, unfortunately for a plastic bottle, you know, we really don't want to be drinking water out of water bottles that are tinted yellow or a little bit hazy or a little bit opaque. So we want to put the, the best and highest quality recycled content into those into those plastic packages that that have that need for transparency or a really high level of clarity. But it's possible. And you can see lots of, of water bottles and, and other plastic packages saying they have 100 percent recycled content. And that means that they're paying a big premium and working really hard to find that really high quality recycled content. But for a package like this that's made of plastic, you could put pretty, you know, any kind of recycled content you want in this comparatively because you're going to dye it blue and make it opaque anyway. So that's definitely a much more flexible packaging format for recycled content. But lots of companies are committing to use recycled content for their portfolios as a whole and are also committing to using recycled content for a lot of the plastic packages that we see behind the scenes, but that you may not see on a store shelf. So if you think about pallets, and transport packaging. Um, I was just walking to a pharmacy the other day, um, a few blocks from me, and all of their shipments were not in cardboard boxes. They were coming in in reusable big plastic crates. So it doesn't matter what those look like. You know, folks can use recycled content and doesn't, you know, doesn't matter if it's different colored or, or not transparent. Um, definitely really flexible options. But because we want to be ensuring that there's a strong market for recyclables, we want to be putting recyclables into the system and also ensuring that there's demand to bring them back. It's not only really important to recycle, but to buy recycled. So absolutely encourage folks to keep an eye out for it where they can. And if you're kind of weighing, you know, the option between two bottles of water or two salad dressings or you name it, you know, and you see one that has recycled content, you know, vote with your dollars and, and buy the one with recycled content and, and help support that that effort. Oh, I love that. That's great advice. And then I know we're trying to end every episode with uh, an interesting or most asked question that you get on Twitter about this material. So talk to me about that around pl plastics. Yeah, it's a great question. And so many good questions come in because I think folks are really concerned about plastic and want to do the right thing with the plastic that they have. Um, and one of the, the most common questions that, that we get is about plastic clamshells. Um, so if you think about kind of what tomatoes come in or what berries come in, I didn't have any handy today, but I'm sure everyone might have them in their in their fridge now or, or, or soon. And those are made of PET, the same kind of plastic that soda bottles are made of. But a lot of folks are confused about whether they can also be recycled or um, whether whether for some reason they're they're not recyclable. And it does depend where you are. So some recycling programs rather folks not put the material into the system, but they're made of PET and they're made of a special kind of PET called crystalline PET. So just like the name suggests crystals, uh, it's a little bit more fragile and brittle than, than the PET that's used in soda bottles. So it's the same kind of plastic, but it's formulated in a different way. And as long as it doesn't make up a huge portion of the PET stream, it's generally okay for plastics processors. Usually they can just kind of fold it into the plastic that they're processing without too much of an issue. Um, in DC, for example, you know, it's not a big part of our stream, so we can take it and we want more of it. And we ask people to put all of that crystalline PET, those PET clamshells into the blue bin here. But a couple things are important to keep an eye out for. So if your community can recycle crystalline PET and those PET clamshells, you always want to take the paper label off of them. We 
talked a little bit about that earlier, paper labels are always a contaminant for plastic packages. Usually those clamshells have a paper label telling you, you know, where your organic tomatoes are from or what kind of berries you have. Uh, and you also want to take the absorption pad that's in the clamshell, if there is one, out, because we know that that can't be recycled either. It's not made of the same material. Um, so, so typically, in, in many places, you can recycle them. You probably should double check with your community for sure. Uh, but it's it's high quality PET that that most folks definitely want more of. Um, and and the the last thing to note there is is you want to just make sure that the clamshell is closed if you're putting it into your blue bin. So we kind of keep it in that nice 3D shape. Oh, that's great to know. I didn't even think about closing it. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of an interesting thing that I, I think the best way of thinking about it as a whole is that the recycling system is designed to sort packages shaped like packages. So if you have a soda bottle, some folks kind of stamp it down or flatten it. We don't want to do that. You know, the recycling facility is designed to shape bottles, you know, that are, are bottle like, you know, not flat bottles. They, they're designed to sort paper as flat items and, and 3D items as everything else. And then they'll sort out those, those specific materials. So whatever we can do to keep them 3D and intact, we, we want to do our best job to do. Oh, that's great to know. Well, once again, this has been amazing. You've shared so much advice in such a short period of time. So that's thank you so fun. much. It's been such a pleasure. All right. We'll see you all next week. Looking forward to it.